Welcome to the Gosha News Sports Roundtable. I'm Prep Sports Coordinator Greg Keim, and with me is sports writer Stephen Brooks. Stephen, we have another first this week. Last week we had a first. We had three guests in the studio here for our podcast. This week we have one guest, but one world champion in yeah. Mr. Sam Groove from Middlebury. Sam, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks for coming in today. And you uh, just returned from Qatar, is it? Right. And you won the high jump in the IPC Athletics World Championships. Right. What uh, What does IPC stand for? Uh, IPC is the International Paralympic Committee. Okay. And basically they are the ones that are in charge of Paralympics worldwide. They're the ones that are in charge of the World Championships, the event. So okay. that's what that stands for. All right. And you, you told me earlier you, you were competing with older guys. Yeah. There was no age group on it, so I'm 17, and most of the other guys there were mid to upper 20s with a lot of experience, so it was kind of intimidating. Wow. How, uh, how did you handle that? How did you all of a sudden jump your best jump ever and, <laughs> and win a world championship? Well, I mean, I, I, I came into it hoping for a new personal best, hoping to get maybe to 1.7 meters. Um, so really, I felt like I wasn't necessarily competing against them. I was competing against myself, just looking to, to get better. And I think that's the mentality that helped me mm -hmm. to get to those higher heights. Um, because I wasn't I wasn't scared of them like I, like I normally would have been. And uh, so then I guess it was just, just adrenaline and then good timing helped me get up to 1.81. <laughs> good time to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, is this World Championships every year, or is it rotating kind of like the Olympics? Well, World Championships happens every two years, okay. um, and then next year has a sort of World Championships, but it's just the, the Paralympic Games. You know, Olympics is every four years, mm -hmm. Paralympics immediately follow the Paralympics, so next year will be in Rio. Gotcha. So, uh, where was it last year? Uh, la where was the last uh, World Championships at? Uh, Lyon, France is where it was. Okay, mm -hmm. so you were... We were talking a little bit before this. You were in a lot hotter place. Uh, just, yeah. What was it like going out there in Qatar, um, if that's even how you pronounce it properly? Yeah. I mean, I know the World Cup, at least right now, uh -huh. is headed out there, and people are talking about the heat and you know things that might affect you in a Middle Eastern environment like that. Just What, what was it like? Have you ever been that far away from home? Well, all my coaches warned us of the heat, saying that it's hot, but then once you actually get there, you, you really experience it. You know, it's 110 degrees and very humid, surprisingly. So, I mean, I never experienced heat like that. It was just, it just surrounded you, but uh, they gave us a lot of helpful tips, especially hydration. They brought cooling vests, cooling towels for us, um, and I was lucky enough to compete after the sun went down, so it wasn't a big deal. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I gotcha. And so, uh, earlier you, you were talking again about um, it's so hot that he said that, you know, inside... It's they overcompensate with the air conditioning. Yeah, bit, right. Air condition entirely too much. The point where it was too cold in our rooms and in the in the cafeteria and stuff. So we had to carry around sweatshirts with us in the 110 degree weather. <laughs> What's uh? Is it worse actually feeling that, or is it the worst sort of the internal feeling of looking, you know, at that thermometer on your phone or watch or whatever <laughs> it is? You know, is, does it feel as bad as I guess you know as the triple digit? Yeah, it, looks. it might just be mental, I don't know, but <laughs> all I know is that I felt really hot. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I got you. What about just uh, the scenery, the culture, the food, anything crazy, anything new it was, like that you tried or anything like that? Uh, I mean, the culture there was just amazing. It was uh, very Middle Eastern, you know, you go over there and all the women are covered completely, and uh, but also Doha itself is just is just beautiful. It's one of the wealthiest cities in the world. The architecture is crazy, lights mm -hmm. everywhere. It was it was really cool. Absolutely, absolutely. So when you look at that, I mean, pretty pretty unique experience, I'm sure, compared to France. Definitely. I mean, I didn't go to France, but right. I feel like this was a maybe a step up. I'm not even sure. Right, yeah. right. Now you mentioned the the Olympics are next year in Rio. What what do you have to go through qualifying process now to to get to go to Rio? Well, there are uh, trials next year in Charlotte, next uh, July, and that's where the team will be selected based okay. on their performances there. Now, and, you know, when you say Paralympics, these are athletes competing in how many different sports? How big was the team you went with? Well, since this was just this was just the track and field this world just championship, track and field so there are field. other sports in the Paralympic field, but. Um, we took about 80 athletes over there, which is a which is a very large team compared to other countries. Um, 
it was one of the bigger teams we've ever taken, which was good because a lot of new athletes got new experience like I did, so mm -hmm. it was a good thing. Now, the, the, does the government sponsor this like they do the Olympic teams, or uh, how, do, how do they raise money to send you over there? Well, the Olympic or the Paralympics is is a part of the Olympics. You'll see them advertised with everything Olympic, so it's just paid for the same as the Olympics. Okay. It's kind of, is it kind of like what uh, the state of Indiana is doing now where they're pairing the regular boys and girls track at championships with the uh, I, I don't know, at Special Olympics? I don't know if that's the right term anymore that they're using. That's a state meet and... I'm not, I don't know about that, so I don't know. Okay. <laughs> What about this Nike gear, Sam? Did they hook you up with all that? They hooked sure? us up with some very cool Nike gear. Uh, lots of it, too, which is one of the cooler parts, I think, because right. you just get to see it all, and, yeah. and it's yours. I mean, yeah. you get to look the part as well? Yeah. Walk us through uh, just the minute-by-minute, minute, you know, I mean, maybe not minute-by-minute, minute, but yeah. start to finish the day you want it, um, you know, the day you're, you're winning the gold medal. From when you wake up to, uh, yeah, to really when you hit the bed again, you know, what was that entire day like and what went into it? Well, the night before was restless sleep, not not great at all. I actually woke up feeling very sick, feeling like I was about to puke. But uh, eventually, I got you know a little bit past that. I got some sleep, and I jumped in the night. So my I my call time wasn't until probably like five o'clock p.m. The event actually started at seven thirty. It was a it was a very long long call time. Um, but yeah, basically a warm up warm up to the call time, and then. Uh, you know, I started at 1.55 meters, hoping to end at 1.7 around around there at least. Um, so I ended up taking a lot of jumps to get to the 181. It's about 15. Usually try to get about six or eight or so. Um, and then eventually, when it was all said and done, it, the event lasted for about two and a half hours. So we were out there a long time, and it was it was exhausting. And so the minute you find out you've won, um, just how does that go? And I'm sure it's a similar ceremony. You probably get up on a podium or something here. Exactly. Here well, when I won, of course, all my whole, a lot of the team was there, all the coaches, and they were all cheering. And my teammates brought down the flag for me to take my victory lap. And uh, and it actually was too late for the medal ceremony to happen because it was about 11 or 11:30 at night at that point. And uh, so the medal ceremony got po pushed to the next day. Oh, but you did get it. You did yeah. get it. Okay. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I thought they cheated you maybe on the oh, ceremony. No, 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 no. I was like, oh, man. Uh, the timing on that. Okay. So the ceremony was actually probably the coolest part to me because they took us all out there, and it was it was very official. And uh, and being up there on the uh, on the top podium and having the uh, national anthem played was, was one really cool. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I saw an article online where the, the uh, first thing you did when you found out you won was you got your coach's cell phone yeah. and you called your mom back here in Middlebury. Uh -huh. Well, my uh, my parents hosted a viewing party at my house for the, on the live stream, mm -hmm. and it was it was about noon here when it was happening. So I knew that they were watching. I knew that they were probably going crazy. So I <laughs> I tried to call my mom as soon as possible, and you know she's she was screaming. You know how moms are, and. Uh, so that was that was pretty funny, I guess. <laughs> well, I, I saw in the article too that she was uh, she was sweating right along with you. Oh, yeah. She was so nervous. Uh huh. She, uh, I'm sure she was screaming and, and uh, going going nuts out there just watching me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it looks sounds like about a 12 hour time difference. That was something I wanted to ask you about. Well, too. it was about seven. Oh, um, okay. Yes, yeah, so when it started, it was about noon, but probably went to. I'm not even too sure. Okay, about seven hours difference from here, though. Yeah, I gotcha. Does uh, was that a tough adjustment or anything? How 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 early did you get in the country to to sort of absorb that? We difference? we definitely planned it. The team took us there, maybe about two a week, week and a half before we actually oh, competed, okay. to get used to the heat and the time difference. And the time, the time difference was actually really tough to go to get over. And because you know over there when you go there. You're going to bed super late and waking up really late, and now that I'm back, I'm going to bed super early and waking up super <laughs> early. So it's hard to get back into the uh, the routine. Right, and of course you're coming right back. You know when we're going to get snow here and in, in yeah, <laughs> I got gotcha. you. You got back on Sunday night. When did you go back to school? When did you? Well, we actually had Monday off for fall break, so Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. What are the perks of walking around, you know, the hallways uh, being a gold medalist? Anything, anything cool? <laughs> <happening>? <laughs> uh, 
any extra, you know, they, they throw you an extra burger at lunch? <laughs> I wish. Did you skip out of class or anything? No, no perks to it? Man? I mean, a lot of congratulations and a lot of, uh, a lot of new faces talking to that are, that are coming up to me, but, I mean, I'm still a student, so. <laughs> you don't walk down the hallways with your gold medal. Right oh, no, 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 no. Not yeah. that. <laughs> Maybe, like, once a year, that might just have yeah. to pull it out or something. Yeah. Maybe sometimes. Just keep, keep reminding people that you actually want Yeah. Right? Just keep it there and anyway. So you, you mentioned that going into it, I mean, you were just trying to, to, to PR, to set a new personal record, and you kind of blew that out of the water. I mean, yeah. Did, you know, now that it's been a while and everything's kind of sunk in or maybe hasn't fully yet, but just, uh, I mean, could you, when you took off on that plane, could you ever expect it that you would come back with a gold medal? I mean, did you know that you'd be that close to contending for that? No, not at all. I was, there's about 15 that qualified for the Worlds mm -hmm. uh, in, in my event, and I was seated 10th. So I was going in expecting, I mean, top 10 was maybe even pushing it because those guys there are, are older, experienced, and very good. So I was going over for the experience, I think, um, you know, hoping to do well, but realistically knowing that probably it's not going to happen. But then coming out of it with the gold medal is, is still kind of crazy because, I mean, nobody, nobody expected that. Um, my coaches and I, we didn't even plan to get to that height. We were planning to get to 1.7, so it, it worked out well, I guess. All right. Mm -hmm. I saw it was like 20, 20 centimeters over your personal yeah. chest, right? Yeah, it was about 8 inches uh, higher, so it, it was getting to heights I've never even practiced on, which was pretty intimidating, but it worked out, so... So what's next? I mean, it's getting colder. I mean, uh, are you going to take a little break here or find For some, sure. some indoor training in, or... I have about two weeks off right now where I'm going to just let myself let myself recover. I'm going to eat what I want to eat because I've been eating <laughs> so well for, for so long. Uh, but then it's right back to it in preseason stuff with indoor training and just, just standard weights and stuff until, you know, the high school season takes off. And then from there, going into, into uh, trials will be what we're looking for. Got it. Do you... Do you flop? Use the Fosbury flop? Yeah. Jump? Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if that's how Just you... the standard J curve with the Fosbury. Yeah. Is that? Did that take any adjustment getting used to? Well, I was lucky enough to keep my left leg, which is the which is the leg I would take off with anyway. So there wasn't there wasn't a whole lot of adjustment. adjustment. But I mean, I've only been high jumping for a year, so it all it's all still a little unnatural. For a year? Yeah. This is my first, <laughs> this is my first year. Well, these guys that you beat over there in Qatar and see this, and the guy I lost to a 17-year-old kid who's been jumping for a year. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> right. I, I don't. They were uh, they were pretty angry. I think they were grunting at me in oh, the right? call room, and it was kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> these guys are a lot bigger and older than me. They're like six five, twenty eight, thirty. So I wasn't gonna mess with them. No, probably a good idea. Yeah. In terms probably. of the U.S. team, then, were you, I mean, I'm guessing you had to be among the youngest, probably, right? For sure. There was a, a large group of, or not a large group, but there was actually a group of juniors and seniors about my age that went, okay. but there was none, none younger than that, really. Gotcha. Hmm. So it was about 80, pe 80 people, so there was a, was there a lot of supervision to keep you guys in line? And oh, they, they have full trust in us. They, uh, I mean, there's not a, a large coaching staff, it's... They expect, it's mostly adults that are going, they just expect us to act like, you know. Like adults. Okay. Yeah, exactly. What's it going to be like um, this year when you go out to your first track meet in a high, in a high school prep situation mm -hmm. and, you know, you're thinking, well, you know, I just jumped in the world championships a while ago, <laughs> you know. what? It's, it's going to be a big confidence boost, I think. Um, but it's also going to be kind of weird because I've only really ever high jumped against people who have uh, a leg disability. Um, so I'm hoping, I, I feel confident that I'll be able to keep up with them, but mm -hmm. we'll see how we'll see how it all goes down, I guess. You talked about preseason indoor training. What what can you, what do you do? I mean, do you run with the team or? Well, uh, for preseason for the school, there's not a whole lot, but I'm working with uh, Kyle Mishler at Goshen College is, is the coach there. Okay. Um, also just a lot of standard weight training with fast twitch muscles, improving that, and just just being able to be explosive. Because I would imagine there would be a lot of difference between coaching you and coaching a, another another athlete, but there's got to be some... I mean, I tell my coaches, 
coach me like you would coach anybody else. I don't want to be treated like like I'm, I'm broken or anything, that I can keep up with anybody okay. and I can do all that. So so really, the training regimen is, is pretty much the same. Yeah. What is it that drew you to high jump then specifically? I mean, because you said you just started a year ago. Yeah, actually it was just, it was a small meet last year. I was doing eight events um, just to try to figure out what I wanted to do. And, and high jump wasn't even necessarily all that good at it, but I just liked it more than the other ones, so I sort of worked on it some and kept getting better and better and just sort of snowballed to here, I guess. Okay. Now you were you were a four-sport athlete mm -hmm. before your occurrence with cancer and you lost part of your leg. What what brought you, what got you into track and field? I mean, why didn't you go back to basketball? Mm -hmm. or? Well, I did actually start with bas going back to basketball and played my freshman year and then lacrosse and then football and then another season of lacrosse, and uh, I, I guess I wasn't competing at the level that I wanted to be. I hadn't returned completely, obviously. I mean, I lost the leg, and so I was looking for the opportunity to compete with people who are going through the same thing that I was. Mm -hmm. So that's what sort of brought us into the Paralympic realm, and uh, just really, really enjoyed it and stuck with it, I guess. Good. So, I mean, where, you know, where, where do your goals go from here, man? I mean, you just, in the grand scheme of things, you just picked up the sport. Right. You know, you, just, you, you blew your seating out of the water and, you know, made a lot of those older guys mad over there. <laughs> you came back with the gold and you're only 17, so where, you know, where do you want to take this? You know, where do the goals even go? Definitely. Since you've reached the peak. Uh, definitely just want to keep doing it and keep improving myself. Um, it may be years down the road, but I have my eyes set on that world record. You know, it's it's obtainable. Um, so yeah, I guess I guess we'll start with Rio and hopefully make that team and uh, go from there. Okay. You said world record. What is the world record for? Uh, it's a one point nine six meters, about six five and a half. Okay. And the record you said over there was, was one point one eight one meters. That uh, was the that what, was the, the world the, championship record, or? right? So sort of the meet record uh, okay. for the world championships. And that has stood since like nineteen eighty. Is twenty one years old? Yeah. 21. Yeah. Wow. What's right. what's it feel like to break a record that's been allowed longer than you've been yeah. around? <laughs> yeah, that was that happened before I was even born. So it actually feels really good. Uh, didn't didn't expect it, obviously, but. Knowing that my name will be in those record books is uh, really cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. What did it? What do you think it meant to friends and family? I mean, neighbors, mm -hmm. teachers, just to 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 be a kid from Middlebury and you know being mm -hmm. on, literally kind of on top of the world <laughs> to some degree. I mean, I've had so much support from my community. They've all they've been with me since the beginning, and uh, so I think it it really meant a lot to me at least. To, to know that they're all with me, to know that they're all watching, and I know it meant a lot to them just to uh, to see me uh, succeed and, and and sort of live my dreams, I guess. Definitely. What was it like coming home Sunday night to the the reception of the people, the crowds uh -huh. that were there? It was it was amazing. I never I didn't even know that that was happening until I, I landed in Chicago that day. So coming home and seeing you know hundreds lining the street for me and, and coming in just to talk to me was was really special. Yeah. So I see this ribbon peeking out of your pocket. Is that what I think it is? <laughs> yes, I brought the gold medal okay. with me. Um, you can hold it if yeah, you like. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that, man. It's, whew. Yeah. Weighty for sure. Yeah, for sure. I uh, I think I'll keep it. <laughs> you yeah, think you'll keep it? <laughs> Unless you get in a pinch, you know, with tuition or something, man. Yeah. I don't know how much it goes for. Uh -huh. Yeah. I think I'd hang on to it. I'd find another way to pay the tuition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are other ways. <laughs> yeah. We hold it up a little bit uh, for the camera. We can get a shot of that. Cool. cool. Definitely. Man, that's where do you keep it? You know, what do you keep it in? Is it you know armored box with? We keep know? it sort of hidden right now. I can't obviously say, okay. but we're that's working right. on a uh, on a frame right. for it. Nice shadow box. It'll be looking good, I think. Nice. I bet. A little I like game worn uh, attire in there too, or anything like that. Uh, we're looking for some pictures, probably, but uh, maybe that's actually a good idea. We haven't thought about. There you go. What? There you go. Other than winning the gold medal, I think what was the what was the highlights of the trip going over there? Um, well, we, I met a ton of new people. That's probably my favorite mm -hmm. part, meeting uh, some really cool athletes from around the world, making new friends. Uh, we also visited, like, the, the market, which was really cultural, and that was amazing. Um, but, yeah, there was just, there was a lot of good things, I guess. Okay. And how, how long was the flight over there and back? How, it was about long? 27 hours. About 27. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's 
a long. Yeah, it was it was rough. Not a whole lot of sleep on the plane either, so it was pretty boring. Just movies. Some yeah. Movies, some movies to mm-hmm. back to back to back. Wow. Probably another good reason why you guys went early to adjust Oof. yourselves to the time schedule and everything. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Wow. That's crazy. What was what was the biggest thing you noticed difference between our culture and their culture over there? Probably uh, just the way they dress was obviously one of the most notable things. Um, they uh, they wear the full body suits. The uh, the women are covered uh, except for their eyes, mm-hmm. which was you know kind of weird to see at first, but it was actually really cool then once you got to look around and see it. Okay, and for for something like this, do they bring in? You know, like food from America, or do you eat the cult, the native food? Or? Well, they had, because there were about 100 countries there, mm-hmm. so they had to really diversify the, the food so that everybody could find something that they would like. So I personally never had any trouble with the food. I uh, thought it was really good. Um, I don't know if anybody else did either. It was, there was enough of it that you, you could find something you like did, every day. Do you eat from dishes that are uh, custom to Qatar? Or? Um... Actually, I don't even know. I just sort of tried things, and, and I don't even know where they were from, but it was good. <laughs> so, yeah. What, uh, what about the atmosphere inside the stadium or arena? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, were there a lot of fans there? Or anybody Some days. travel, you know, all the way over there just to watch? Or? Yeah. Um, the stadium held about 12,000, and I'm not sure the total number that were in there, but some days there were, there were a good amount of people there. I know for mine, there started out, with a lot, but because of how long it went and how right. late it went, it sort of yeah, started right. to empty out by the time I was done. Okay. Did you, you know, you said your event went long, it was like, what, two and a half hours, mm-hmm. I think you said. Was that because the competitors were just so good that they were not missing? Yeah. Or? Well, I mean, the bar started at a height of 1.45 meters mm-hmm. and went up by three centimeters, so to end at 181 was a ton of jumps. Um, and that obviously took a long time. Plus, the, the flight of jumpers was 15, I think, and so there were just a lot of people to get through, but it worked out, I guess. And all that heat and humidity probably didn't help you. Oh, either. absolutely. I mean, I ended up I ended up drinking, I think, five or six water bottles throughout the course of it just, just because I was sweating so much and because it was part of my routine between jumps, and uh, that sort of hit me afterwards that I was like, whoa, i got to go. <laughs> Well, maybe if you go to Rio, it'll be a little cooler now. <laughs> Hopefully, but I'm not too sure. I don't know. It's probably pretty warm in yeah. Rio in the summertime, too. I, I would imagine. imagine, yeah. Yeah, probably somewhere. That's everything for me, Sam. Uh, Greg, anything else? Yeah, that's you? it. Hey, we really appreciate you coming, coming in. Yeah, yeah thanks for having me. No like problem. It's a like, pleasure. Like Greg said, you know, we had we had a party in here last week, yeah. and now we got a gold medalist in here this week. Uh, I don't know if, you know. I don't know how we're going to talk this. I don't know. We might talk, just... We well, may have shut to, it down for a while. We may have to have Sheila come good. on next week <laughs> with guest star with us yeah. To, oh, yeah. to top this. You know? I guess so. Uh, well, Sam, when you win another one, uh, come back and talk to us again. For please. sure. Uh, we'll do. talking with you, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, folks. That'll wrap up another edition of the Goshen News Roundtable. We will see you next week.